Hello, hi. Hi, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I picked the time to be outside when my gardener began to show up. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never a dull moment, right? All right. Well, let's go ahead and start. Uh, welcome to the FPGA stand-up meeting for a phase four ground from Open Research Institute for Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. Um, so please let us know what you've done for the past week. What are your plans for the next week? If you have any challenges and if you need anything, any resources or materials. Andre, why don't you start us off? Um, so I did feel, um, I made a little uh, a wiki page uh, for the Petal Linux, basically uh, the commands I used and things like that um, is not really meant to be a complete. It's just, you know, I did this um, and it worked. Uh, and there is one sort of troubleshooting thing that uh, I sometimes have to reset and, you know, just, you know, things I have to do when uh, using Petal Linux and booting it. I did try building the encoder for the ZCU 106. It it worked. I'm trying to figure out um, how to use ADMA because uh, especially reading data, it's very, very slow. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to work out um, basically a faster workflow. Um, and we're going to need DMA anyways. So um yeah, still working on that. And that's it, really. Well, that's plenty. Yeah, that's weird that it's slow. It's not supposed to be. How, When you say slow, how slow do you mean? Uh, so it's, it, I'm using a Axi Stream FIFO, I think is the name of the, name of the core. And basically, uh, if I want to transmit, I will write, say, the length and write to the same address, you know, word, 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 you know, to fill in those that, that length. And then when this completes, it will transmit. And then on the receiving end, it's sort of uh, mirrored. So I read how many entries there are, and then, you know, read, 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 read. But the read frame is way bigger. So reading takes, I don't know, a minute. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly. Well, the ARM is, it's not that the ARM is slow, but doing this transfer over the ARM might not be, you know, <laughs> the fastest thing. It would be way easier if we could DMA somewhere and then the ARM can just say, you know, mem up. Right. Okay. That and makes that's sense. That's it. Yeah, I guess I'm just kind of surprised that it's so slow. But it, I mean, since we want to go in a different direction, maybe we mm -hmm. should just, uh, help you get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm still getting started with DMA. I, I need to first choose one of the four, I think four offerings. Yeah. Uh, that Xanix, is, Xanix have. And yeah, then build and start testing. Okay. Yeah, let me know if I can help out in any way. Um, mm -hmm. And then yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've, I'm trying to use the ZCU 106 to learn how to how to better learn um, how to how to use Petal Linux. Um, and what mm -hmm. I've done is I've changed it to where it boots from the SD card. If I need to change it back every time to JTAG, which is where it was, mm -hmm. uh, let me know so I can I can do that. Like when I leave it, I can change it back to to the JTAG. I, I think that it might work if I have it set to SD card. It should still work from uh, JTAG. That was something that that I think we discussed for the other board. Um, but yeah, it. I, I yeah, I was thinking. I was reading the Slack messages, and I think it. There's no reason why it shouldn't work. Okay. Yeah. But, if it if it doesn't, just let me know, and then uh, yeah. because I'm only going to show up and use it when I have to walk through. Um, the next step of both either the training or trying to get mm -hmm. up to speed with uh, with using Petal Linux and, and using um, the SD card approach. So it's easy for me to put it back for mm -hmm. JTAG and leave it there. Um, and since most of the time, I think I'm going to be working on it when when you're on hours that you would definitely not be there. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's, this should work out, even if I have to change the um, the switches, the settings. 
then no problem. Mm -hmm. So just just let me know if you have any trouble whatsoever, and then I can just leave it for JTAG uh, every time. Yeah, and there is a, a way to sort of out, out like a lock mechanism because I think you you cannot have cannot have two people using the same uh, TTY USB thingy. Yeah, it'll show up. We found this out. Um, yeah, it, it'll show up as busy or locked. It'll say, you know, it'll wave you off. So we we did see that yesterday. Yeah, so that's sort of the lock. You know, if someone is using. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, we did find yeah. out that you can't use Minicom. You have to use something like screen. So that was that was an interesting lesson. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I used I, I was lucky. I used screen and yeah, it just you worked did. then. <laughs> yeah, you did good. I think, oh my goodness. I, we spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out why we couldn't get a serial port. So <laughs> oh. but uh good we're in good shape now. So it's uh you know cool. moving forward. Cool. Nice, nice, cool. All right. Do you need Do you need any stuff, any things, any help, or or any particular roadblocks I can help with? Um, just time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I've been working really hard on trying to figure out how to how to get a shipment of time in uh, for everybody. <laughs> so I'll keep I'll keep at it. Yeah. Cool. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I will. I'll go ahead and say that over the past week. Um, uh, it turns out that uh, having my middle daughter go off to college took a lot more time than I thought. So I'm behind where I wanted to be from last week. However, there has been a lot of progress. So the what I did is um, st started a, uh, for real trying to learn how to use Petalinux and trying to get the tools uh, under my fingers and, and that's coming along. Um, so that's been good. But I have not yet gotten the other board, the ZC706, to produce any um, signals over the air yet. So that was one of the things I wanted to do over the past week and is still on the agenda. Um, some, some places that I didn't think I would make progress over and I did are working with the M17 team to get them more aware of um, FPGA resources and getting them more aware of HDL and doing more work uh, ahead of time, like with bit error rate schemes, bit error rate testing to have their kind of ducks in a row. And that's come along very well over the past week. So I was expecting much more of a uh, battle there. But there's several people on their team that are that are very interested in moving to FPGA and getting more of their work um, in the remote labs and on HDL. So uh, that was a, a surprisingly quick bit of progress that I can report that I expected to take many more weeks. Um, the, then the, the getting the additional resources online, not getting uh, communications with Florida, not yet where they need to be. So we're still talking about moving and the, the new lab location is not going to be online until September anyway. Uh, so I'm still trying to get things to additional resources online in the meantime that's not progressed over the past week as quickly as I uh, thought it might, um, but understandable. So still working on that. And yeah, time, uh, yeah, the biggest uh, challenge for me is logistics and getting more hours out of the day. So a conundrum that we all share. Okay, so that's it for me. So off to Paul, KB5MU, you have the floor. Hello, from the remote labs, I have uh, nothing really to report, so. Uh, we're trying to provide whatever support is necessary. It's all good, right? That sounds sounds yeah. like a ringing endorsement of goodness. <laughs> no, no news may be good news unless you're just not paying attention. <laughs> well, we okay. So, what about the DHCP edition that's coming? Well, if necessary, I w was resisting having a DHCP server on the on the land because having static IPs really helps with the uh, automation. But if the uh, the pedal Linux build can only work with DHCP, then we can we can compromise on that and add a DHCP server. Uh, I'd rather figure out how to assign a static IP to the pedal Linux build, frankly. Okay. It's, yeah, that's I, probably that's my fault because the what I the reason that this happened is because I was using the provided image from the dev development board. And it goes out and looks for DHCP. So, and I think Andre 
spoke up too. So, so I'm going to uh, defer to him. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a good. Like, I kind of forgot about this because I, I you know, it's, <laughs> I didn't look into this for a week. But you can set up the static IP in the Paralinus config. So you basically, if you boot whatever, it will sort of always have that IP, um, which is yeah, very very nice. I think. Okay, is so that that's built this... into the pedal? Sorry. Oh no, I was just asking if that's the preferred way forward because then, then I you know it seems like something I should be able to do in building the next image that I want to use, so that. It seems like that's the right the right answer for us in the in the remote lab. Yeah, I just wait. Where's the chat? I just used it. I paste the the link. I literally did this, the, the thing that they're describing. So parallel config, and then inside subsystem, Ethernet, obtain IP and I address automatically. No. So I'm looking at the page, maybe not everyone is looking, but basically there's, you know, the steps and you set up the IP, the mask and the gateway and okay. that works. Okay, got it. Yeah, I got the link. Thank you. Cool. Is there a way to uh, to set the IP on a pre-built version or do you have to go all the way back to the Pedal Linux and rebuild? Yeah. So yeah, if you have an existing project, you can run the Pedal Linux config, change this, and then Pedal Linux build, and it will be fast-ish. I, th I think it will be like a minute or so. Okay. It will oh, reuse a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know anything about Pedal Linux config. Does oh, it take it, it, yeah. No, it looks like the there's um. Oh, sorry, Paul. I didn't mean to talk over you. Does the Pedal Linux config? take its starting values from the existing image or do you have to feed it a file that replaces all the settings? It's what I'm interested in not, is not so much performance, how long it takes, but how certain you are you got everything right. And the, the virtue of using a pre-built pre image is that you know everything is was right at some point. Uh, so it will generate files. Um, I, it, it's like the, so last time I built the kernel was, I don't know, many years ago, but you know how it, it generates like a config file with everything you changed. So it will generate that and you could in theory just commit that somewhere uh, in import, it, it, you know, it, it can be done more, you know, more automatically than just uh, using the GUI to change stuff. Um, okay. So you're trying to make sure I, I don't that... know enough about the situation to, to ask follow up questions. So let me learn a little bit more about Pedal Linux and maybe mm. we'll address this again. Yeah, I, yeah, I think we need uh, a, a sort of a workflow will sort of emerge. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, it would probably help. I mean, yeah. I can see some things in the page that you linked, which is super helpful. And the, mm. the first workaround um, that's mentioned is something that we actually did yesterday in order to just fix it, which was IF config. Yeah. You know, like just assign it when you when you bring it up and use it. Yeah. You know. Okay. So if we want to automate that, though, it looks like yeah, we have to just rebuild re rebuild the package. And you know what? That's okay too. Like we we should be able to do this. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we're in good shape. I think we are. We'll move towards making it easier to use and easier to to handle. Um, and then this page is super helpful. And I think the Petal Linux, the say the operating system as a whole, it's more or less independent of the uh, FPGA thing. Like it's a car a board thing. I I, I think. I might be talking, no, maybe not. Like it has to know the addresses. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah. I think it does have to, yeah. I, I think we got we got a good path forward. We'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to work out how to sort of automate this so we can, I don't know, dot, dot slash run dot sh and it will just build the thing. Um, we, you know, so 
people don't need to go into the config and you know manually change it, it's that's error prone and all right yeah it kind of is i mean it's yeah. it's okay for us to kind of like clap things together and get things to work mm -hmm. um you know if we're if we're all up in the the you know all all up in the guts of it um yeah mm -hmm. i'll i'll work with paul and try to figure it out and uh and, and just take this this conversation as a good mm -hmm. uh basis for for you know, future work over the next week or so. Cool. Yeah, cool. All right. Any other comments? Um, if uh, if there's anything I can do in the M17 things, uh, you know, just let me know. Okay, I sure um, will. Yeah, I'll uh, w yeah, I, I absolutely will. I'll uh, I'll count you in. Cool. Cool. Nice. But no, happy to help. Yeah. All right, good deal. See you on Slack. Okay. And okay. Uh, yeah, and then uh, we should be able to meet next week. And I'm looking forward to it. Cool. Nice. You bet. All right. See you soon. See ya. Thank you.